Kevin Delaney here coming to you today from Santa Monica, California. And today I want to talk to you about Century 3 Mall. Now, if you're not from the Pittsburgh area, you probably don't know what Century 3 Mall is. If you are from Pittsburgh, you probably have heard about what's been going on with Century 3 Mall lately. Uh, basically, uh, Century 3 is a, a very big shopping mall in Pittsburgh. It opened, I believe, in 1979. And uh, lately, uh, in recent years, they've been having a lot of difficulties, a lot of problems there. And the latest thing is that the mall has basically been shut down. Um, over the years, uh, stores started leaving. Uh, more and more stores were closing up. Uh, the, the big chain stores were being replaced by either uh, small independent stores that you know were selling discount items or just uh, would be replaced with nothing. The last I heard, I think there was like 12 stores left out of, uh, I'm not sure how many there were in its heyday, but I certainly remember going to Century 3 as a kid with my family and it was a bustling mall. Uh, had a big food court, a lot of stuff going on there. They had a stage, I remember they'd have dance competitions and fashion shows and whatnot. A lot, a lot of stuff happening at Century 3. In fact, I remember there was a big kind of controversy for a while because it was such a popular hangout for teenagers. And this was back in the days when like all the teenagers had jean jackets. You'd see girls with their frizzy hair and uh, all the guys with their jean jackets and the jean jackets on the back would have an airbrushed um, image of like one of the Metallica album covers or Ozzy Osbourne or Judas Priest or something like that. And there was a big controversy because these teenagers would come to the mall and they would just hang out. They wouldn't buy anything. They would eat in the uh, food court, but they wouldn't really shop. They were just there to hang out and smoke because in those days you could smoke in the mall. So. Uh, it was a very popular place, uh, very, I mean, it was so crowded. I remember people who, uh, you know, will, who were there in that era will tell you, you know, try going to Century 3 Mall around the holidays. It was insane. It was absolutely crazy. Um, you couldn't find a parking space. You could not find a parking space. You'd drive around and drive around and drive around and, uh, just waiting for somebody somewhere to, to pull out. You, you would literally have this gigantic parking area. They even had a parking structure there, which was a couple different levels. And um, every space was taken. That's how popular the mall was at that time. So anyway, over the years, needless to say, the mall declined and declined and declined and declined. And the latest thing, apparently, they had a uh, they had a lot of cold weather in Pittsburgh, like really cold weather. And something happened with the, the pipes in the mall. They had a, a problem with the sprinkler system that was no longer working. And I know they'd had other kind of uh, structural problems. People were saying that uh, in some recent years they tried to remodel the mall and they put in these uh, like skylights. Unfortunately, the skylights would leak water. So there was water leaking in and they'd have to position these giant trash cans to try to, you know, catch the water. So uh, the uh, sprinkler system was not working. And the latest thing was then because of that, uh, the uh, officials there in the city deemed it to be unsafe and uninhabitable and they put notices on the doors and apparently now the mall is completely shut down. Now I think there's still two of the large types of stores there. I think JC Penney is still there and um, there's a sports uh, sporting goods store there which have their own entrances and apparently they also have their own sprinkler system. So they're still in operation, but the mall itself has at this point been closed. Will it reopen? Nobody seems to know. Part of the issue is that the mall was purchased some years ago 
by a company uh, that's uh, out of Las Vegas, apparently. And this is a story that, you know, you hear quite a lot. The mall was, was not doing real well, and it went up for sale, and this company bought it. But as is often the case with companies that are not physically located in the area where the mall is, or it doesn't have to be a mall, the same thing happens like with amusement parks. Amusement parks get bought by some company that has no connection to the area at all, and they're just really buying it as an investment. And uh, in this case, it was bought by this, this uh, company in Las Vegas, and apparently the mayor of the, uh, the city where the mall is, it's actually technically not in Pittsburgh, it's in West Mifflin, and West Mifflin has their own mayor, but they said that the, the mayor of West Mifflin has attempted to uh, communicate with this company and they just don't even respond to him. So the latest thing uh, with this, this latest fiasco, the mayor sent a very strongly worded email to this company and said, you know, you've got to tell us what's going on. You've got to communicate with us. But apparently they're, they're not in good communication with the city at all. So it looks like at this point, Century 3 Mall may be done. And my question is, what killed Century 3 Mall? Because, of course, this is happening all over the country. It's been going on for a long time. In fact, to be honest, I'm amazed that Century 3 has, has held on this long. Um, this is nothing new. In fact, there are people who have YouTube channels that are devoted to exploring dead malls. They go into these places. Now, some of these places are actually closed, so they're not supposed to be in there. But they somehow get in and they shoot video of these places. Now, of course, some of these uh, malls, you know, there are, there are pictures or videos available from their heyday. Some of these malls, of course, were used for movie shoots. I remember there was a, uh, what was that movie? The Legend of Billie Jean. They had scenes inside of a mall and somebody went to that mall recently. And again, it's just, it's such a difference. Um, you know, it's so obvious that this mall is just truly on its last legs. In fact, it's kind of amazing that it's even open at all. Um, and and that, Century 3 was one of those places. But my big question is what killed Century 3 Mall. Who killed it? And of course, many people have a lot of different ideas here, and I'm sure there are many factors involved, but if you really want my answer, what killed Century 3 Mall? Who killed Century 3 Mall? Who killed all the, not all of them, obviously, but so many of these malls, these malls that are dying or dead? Who killed them? You did. You. You killed them. Now, I'm not singling you out here. You and me and all of us, really, we killed them. Why? Because we don't go there anymore. We don't shop there. We don't spend money there anymore. Certainly not like we used to. I mean, you know, in recent years, I did uh, make a couple of trips back to Century 3 Mall, but it was just for nostalgia's sake. It was just kind of to go there and kind of gape at the uh, huge areas where there's nothing happening, you know, whereas at one time this mall was bustling and so much was going on. But, I, you know, I certainly wasn't spending any money there. And even, you know, some years ago, uh, even before that, I wasn't spending money there. I wasn't buying stuff. Certainly, I wasn't walking around with bags, you know, full of purchases. You know, you might buy something in the, in the uh, food court, but... I really, myself, frankly, I don't buy much of anything in a store anymore. I buy most of my stuff online. You know, there's been a lot uh, said about Sears lately and Kmart. In fact, there's a big Kmart here in LA um, at 3rd and Fairfax, which kind of surprised a lot of people that that place closed up. But it seems like more and more you're hearing news reports about Kmart and Sears, which are part of the same company, uh, closing up. And I, I'm just amazed that, <laughs> that they have any left to close at this point. It's like, how many of these Kmarts are there? It just goes to show how ubiquitous Kmart and Sears were at one time. 
in this country that they can just keep closing them and closing them and more and they're closing another you know 36 stores and another 10 and another 12 you say how many are left at this point so they close this one at third and fairfax and you know it's just sitting there vacant now and you know i i would go there occasionally very occasionally if i needed to buy something like you know some hangers or uh you know some other i can't even think of anything else well I, you know little houseware type things you could pop in real quick buy a little something but again i don't really do my shopping in a store like that i don't i don't go to any stores with any kind of regularity occasionally i will go into a store if i really need like one thing and i want to get it right away otherwise i buy my stuff online that's what most people do that's how we shop now we shop online predominantly and you know people have been saying i posted something the other day on facebook about century three mall and in a number of people inevitably are going to say things about how sad it is and oh it's it's so sad to see what's happened to this mall and i guess it is maybe i'd use the word unfortunate but what you have to remember is a place like this despite the fact that many people have a great many memories attached to this you know a woman i know was telling me that when she was a teenager she worked in a bunch of different places she said I have to even think and remember how many of different stores there I worked in. You know, this was a big part of a lot of people's lives. It was part of their social life, it was part of their, um, you know, their, I mean, holiday traditions, you know, going to the mall to see Santa and little kids riding on the train and, and all that stuff they used to do. But uh, yeah, I guess it's sad. I guess it's sad to see it go. but. You know, it's commerce, it's business. If, if y'all ain't coming and spending money and swiping a credit card, how do you expect them to stay in business? How do you expect the stores to stay open? Um, same thing, like I said, you know, Kmart and Sears and a lot of these other places. If, if you don't go there and you don't buy stuff, why would they stay open? Why would they stay in business? And it's important to see it from that standpoint. I mean, this is not some foundation you know for uh, for the arts or something like that I mean this is this is a business this is a a, uh, a place of business and if business is not being transacted then it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to keep the doors open they're not going to keep the doors open and keep the lights going and the escalators running all because of your memories of your childhood you know that's just a fact and uh, once upon a time, people were much more um, apt to uh, go to the mall, spend several hours there, and shop. They really shopped. They would go there. You'd see people walking around with these bags. In fact, people would... I, that was a thing, too. I remember, like, around Christmas, you'd be driving around the, uh, the parking area trying to find a spot, and you'd think somebody was coming out to their car like oh good they're gonna move we can get their spot and they'd be like no i'm not moving i'm just putting bags into the car i'm just putting my purchases into the car and then i'm going back into the mall to shop some more i just want to get rid of these bags um you know in the uh the apartment building where i live it's amazing now every day the packages that are coming into people's apartments. I mean, uh, we have, of course, the regular U.S. mail. There's UPS. There's FedEx. There's um, Amazon themselves have their own delivery service. Um, there's other delivery places. I mean, even food. Uh, I do a lot of uh, ordering online of groceries. Um, somebody in my building gets this... Uh, I can't think of what it's called, but it's it's a it's a box of like organic produce, and uh, sometimes even that delivery comes like in the middle of the night, and they actually can't get in, so they leave it outside. And I'll if I see it, uh, you know, late at night, I'll drag it inside into the lobby. But uh, again, you know, that, this is how people are doing it now, and younger people, I think, especially, are kind of perplexed at this whole idea of 
going out and shopping. Why would I go out and shop when I can just order this stuff? Now, of course, I've talked about how uh, this can be a two-edged sword in a lot of ways. You know, in a lot of ways, we can become very lazy, and I think in a lot of ways, we have become very lazy. But then again, why waste time, you know, going out somewhere when you can get it, get whatever you need, you know, with a couple clicks of the mouse or a couple taps on your smartphone, and then it gets delivered right to your door. So that's the world that we live in. You know, it's not the 1980s, it's not the 1990s anymore. I think these malls, they served a purpose at one time. They don't serve nearly as much of a purpose anymore. Now let me just add, obviously not all malls are failing. Uh, there's actually another mall in Pittsburgh called Ross Park Mall, which as far as I know is actually doing quite well. They don't seem to have any signs of uh, failing at this point. And you might say, well, what's the difference? Why did one fail and the other one didn't? Well, again, there can be a number of factors involved. But from what I understand, the malls that are doing really well tend to be the higher-end malls. And Ross Park Mall is definitely a higher-end mall. People, apparently, with money or people who want to buy higher-end types of products still do want to shop in stores. So that's interesting. Um, which kind of makes sense, you know, people want to actually see the product or again, higher end clothes and whatnot, they want to try it on. Of course, that's something you can't do with online. Then again, one thing a lot of people do is they'll go to a, a store and they'll look at products and see what they want to get. And then they pull out their smartphone and they find it for a lot cheaper online. And so they're technically shopping in the store, but they don't actually buy in the store they buy through their smartphone. So anyway, that's what I think. You can tell me what you think. If you have any ideas or thoughts, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll talk to you later.